Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards, and in this lesson, number 111, we'll take a look at Cap Theorem Illustrated. Cap Theorem, also known as Brewer's Theorem, states the following. Within any given system, we could have consistency. Now, consistency, the C part of Cap Theorem, is defined as that a query is always guaranteed to return the latest updated value, the latest data. And if it can't, it will return an error if it can't guarantee that that's the latest information. We can also have availability. That's the A part of CAP. Now, availability says a query will always return information, always return data, but it might not be the latest update. Now, the P part is partition tolerance which says in any given system that the system will continue to operate in the event of a network failure. Now, Cap Theorem says you cannot have all three of these, so pick two. But it's kind of interesting. Let's focus on the partition tolerance piece. And let's go back to Lesson 18 of Software Architecture Monday, where I talked about the fallacies of distributed computing. Now, a fallacy is something that we believe to be true, but it really isn't. And specifically, I want to look at fallacy number one. The network is reliable. No, it's not. Everything's running fine here, but once we get a partition or a failure in the network, now these two services can't communicate. So in distributed computing and distributed architectures, it's interesting to note that those kind of systems really have to support partition tolerance. We really don't have a choice. So the point is that one's a given, which means Cap Theorem really is stating between all three of these, pick one. We could have partitioning and consistency or partitioning and availability because networks do fail. So let's take a look at each of these choices. And I want to graphically show these through topologies to really show you what's going on bet between consistency and availability so we can really understand uh, the choices that we have. Let's talk first about a topology. So here's a particular node, and we have inventory service, which does its updates to a data. And also node 2 has the same topology, where we have the inventory service and updating data. And now this data is kept in sync through bi-directional database replication. So it creates that consistency. And we also have a client that can go through some sort of network switch or load balancer to either of these nodes to get or update inventory. So let's talk first about availability and partition tolerance. And that would be AP. So with AP, here's what happens we lose connectivity between these databases, between the nodes. They can't talk to one another anymore. What AP says, availability, and choosing that over consistency, is that any request to either of these nodes will continue to operate and continue to return data. However, unfortunately, it can't guarantee that that data is the latest, and so we might be returning stale data. And so in this case, the trade-off really here is that data is always returned. We get that availability, but it doesn't necessarily reflect the latest update. So we don't have any consistency of our data. Now, once the network communication does start happening, now the data comes back in sync and we're all set again. But notice, there was no interruption from the client standpoint. Let's now talk about consistency, and I want to show a couple of topologies for this one. So with consistency and partition tolerance, CP, we have the same kind of scenario, but we lose connectivity. The network fails between the nodes. What CP says when we choose consistency is to say any query to any node will now fail because the data must be kept consistent. It must be always in sync. And so our trade-off here is that errors will always be returned, but there's not a chance that our data will ever be out of sync. 
Now it's kind of interesting here because these really are eventual consistency. There's a small amount of latency that occurs between the databases during that bidirectional replication. However small, there still is a slight chance that I can't guarantee that I'm returning the very latest data. And so another topology to guarantee that is as follows, where node 1 contains the data and notice node 2 does not. And it actually has to communicate with node 1 to get the data. Now, if we have a network, not if, <laughs> when we have a network failure, <laughs> we're still choosing consistency over availability, but there's an interesting story with this topology here. Errors will always be returned in node 2 or any node that doesn't contain the data. But interestingly enough, if the client is directed to node 1, it will work. And so here, with this kind of topology, it keeps things consistent. That's why we're choosing consistency. But errors are only returned for non-data nodes. Interesting though, as you'll notice here on the slide, I said no availability. But we have partial availability, Mark. Well, that's true. But the key point here is availability is defined as always being able to process a request, always being able to return data to you and not producing an error. And so that case, formally, this still is not defined as availability, although switching the topology gives us some level of continued processing. So I consider this more true consistency as a, when we talk about CP um, because it really has that, that, that doesn't worry about the synchronization of the data. So for more information about architecture in general, you can certainly go to our book, The Fundamentals of Software Architecture, that Neil Afford and I published last year, and also my website, developer2architect.com. And specifically, under the Lessons link, Software Architecture Monday, where all these lessons are housed. And so this has been Lesson 111, Cap Theorem Illustrated. I hope that clarifies some questions about Cap Theorem and really qualifies that we only do really have two choices, not three, when we look at that triangle. Thank you all so much, and stay tuned next week or the week after next uh, for another lesson in Software Architecture Monday. Thank you all so much.